while reading the books i know that i am reading the igen etobadi but the thing is i don't know which is important like i am grasping the concepts but yeah. exam point of view i miss the exam point of view that's the thing it's most of the time it's conceptual questions maybe around 60 questions around 60 questions they are conceptual questions only because of my previous experience with any ines i could yeah. know like this is the thing that's going they're going to ask in the transman okay. basically they are stressing upon the immunosuppressive drugs Mm-hmm. they are not going to ask us about the transplant and what i'm going to do after that the dialysis initial by during my first reading i couldn't understand it like most of the things i couldn't understand but after that i had to actually use your video transplant and dialysis i had to use your video i had to read it again so that was actually helpful mm-hmm. if i didn't i had read prehali twice if i didn't get this time then i'm not good enough to be in nephrology good evening uh, ladies and gentlemen once again exam times once again with the topper it was praveen last time uh, rank 1 for nephrology in this time around we have somebody who is his classmate from the same college from the same class and that is vignesh once again rank 1 nephrology uh, people associate uh, madras the old madras new chennai with i think cinema a lot because i think cinema was born there we always tend to think about madras with respect to movies and now that we have four separate south indian languages coming their own centers but in the past everything used to originate from chennai and whenever i think of chennai i think something that is very close to cinema is nephrology nephrology is also in college schools in chennai if you ask me what is the most happening place with respect to nephrology in the whole country it is chennai where maximum number of transplants happen it's chennai which college where you get maximum number of transplants in the government sector that is madras medical college and once again very very happy and proud to invite somebody from madras medical college ug madras medical college 2011 batch pg again madras medical college 2018 batch and somebody who has actually driven all his inspiration from the greatest capital of this subject called nephrology and welcome vignesh he is rank 1 iniss nephrology one of the most toughly competitive subjects in nephrology one of the most uh, what do you say toughest sciences to pursue as a career i am a very challenging science which is part medicine which is part intervention which is part transplant which is part dialysis extremely complicated extremely engaging extremely challenging and i think it is the one for people who who are fully into medicine and i think i am vignesh is one such person so welcome vignesh to the show and uh, very very hearty congrats from our side and it's so happy a feeling for me to see to it that that we just getting toppers one after the other one after the other from the same place and that is i think what is so interesting i think there has been no exam wherein we've not had a topper from chennai i think as with respect to nephrology per se i'm saying not with respect to any other science so I think. What do you feel is the main reason why all these stoppers are more or less, as far as nephrology is concerned, concentrated in and around Chennai? Do you feel there is any reason for that? Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure to meet you. I think in person. Uh, the main thing that we are choosing nephrology is because our exposure during our MD period. Like we are getting so many cases with respect to nephrology, and actually we are learning from the legends there, especially Gopal Krishna sir. He is the inspiration for us. maybe that's why we are choosing nephrology great uh, did you have any exposure to nephrology as an undergrad student have you ever thought of pursuing uh, at that point in time or you you had this exposure only as post grad student uh, i chose my field only after the post graduation so before that during my undergrad graduation i know that i have to do medicine like i'm no, not no. interested in surgery at the time so okay. after coming into medicine then only i got to know like this is the field that i have to be yes very good and uh, like you know like in madras medical college you get exposure to wide range specialties i think you would have had rheumatology exposure you would have had hematology exposure you would have had cardio exposure neuro exposure etc so they'll just tell me that something that is there in nephrology which you feel is uh, like that striking part or maybe the kick you get from nephrology is it like what what is different from the other specialties oh the actual thing is when we choose medicine we are choosing medicine because it's interesting and that we are, it's like solving a puzzle or something yes we get the kick and yes. nephrology is kind of similar to that you are getting yes. the same kick there you will have a touch with medicine yes and at the same time you are getting super specialization also oh yes so Correct. you won't lose that background medicine background mm. with other things it will be specialty that's it you won't yes. have that medicine touch yes. that's the problem i think yes i think uh, better than calling us nephrologist it is always better to address as somebody who does transplant a physician who does transplant that's why many of yeah, the nephrologists yeah. because it's transplant physicians because essentially you are a physician a physician who does a few procedures knows about dialysis and deals with transplant patients is called a nephrologist so i think yeah, what that's true that's true only strongly close or as close as possible to modern day medicine is basically a subject like nephrology 
and i think uh, many of the people may not be knowing but uh, as he has mentioned gopal krishnan sir is uh, a legend i think some of the some of the people who are actually watching the video may be knowing him he is a legend in the field of nephrology he is actually taken over from the likes of uh, amareshan sir and to say with sir to vijay kumar sir it's a big 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 list of people including gopal krishnan sir and his peers uh, edwin fernando sir at stanley so these are the people who have actually made nephrology what it is today in chennai and that is again being the reason for thousands of students aspiring to take up the subject as a specialty and take a career forward with that so once you decided that okay nephrology is going to be my be my way forward and you know the pattern of the exam now you know ini exam is based on the subject per se how did you plan out your preparation and what was your plan and when did you start uh my preparation started after my final exam final md exam okay uh and i know that i have to read fairly like in and out i have to read fairly i have to know the basics and yeah. in the concepts okay. so my preparation started around october i think october in starting first week yeah okay. that time i started and i started reading fairly but few topics i had written my mt period also okay. so i had to revise that after that i started from like first from first chapter to till transplant i read it then yeah good but uh, Yeah, but the thing is, I think the preparation is not enough at at that time. Yeah. So you were ranked that, the last I N exam was thirty. Your last rank for I mean your rank for last I N exam. Ah, uh, twenty three. Twenty three. So you reached up to twenty three by last year end, and then from twenty three you have actually come to one. So you yeah. have actually seen some of the videos also, like Glomerular Disease, etc. So what is the difference with respect to reading the book and watching the video? What is the feel that you think is different? That means, like you're reading IG and everybody from Bihari, you're watching IG and everybody, everybody from somebody else's perspective, like say my perspective. So you are actually comparing between the two. What do you feel is the fundamental difference between the two? Oh, uh, while reading the books, I know that I I am reading IG and everybody, but the thing is, I don't know which is important. Like I am grasping the concepts, but yeah. exam point of view, I miss the exam point of view. That's the thing. Okay. Uh, with, so I. Then I decided I had to watch the videos also for that because I need the exam point of view which I missed doing last time in ASS. Okay, fine. Okay. That. What about the, what about notes? Like, do you make notes? What is your take on that? Do we have to make notes or like uh, do we like because people are asking right behind us now and they are like eating our head asking for notes, 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 and now the notes are all ready and by June end you will get the notes. So what is yes. your feeling? Do we have to make notes by ourselves or is it enough if we buy notes and adjust with that? Uh. I don't know, sir. I have never tried notes. That's the thing. My during my PG preparation period, no, sir. During my PG preparation period, that it was necessary because there were nineteen subjects and I had to remember yeah. a lot. Okay. But this is a single subject, and I have to understand the concepts. That's more than enough. Okay. If I understand so the concepts, you don't make any notes. No, sir. For this time, I didn't make any. Okay. So how do you revise then? No, uh, I go through the book again. Like important points I have highlighted, that itself in the book itself. So I have wow. to revise it again. So you are actually like us. Like when I was preparing for the exam five years ago, we also used to do the same thing. But now that has gone completely out of fashion. Now we don't see anybody who doesn't make notes. When they start talking about their preparation itself, they talk about how they made notes, how they revised, etc. And this era is actually full of people who are obsessed with making notes and studying from notes. So I'm actually very glad to meet a person who's not made notes. So I think just to again tell you that uh, that is possible because many of the people they get obsessed with making notes that more than understanding the concept. I think they waste time in making notes, giving blue color, black color, green color, red color, etc. But what is more important is what goes into your system. So as far yeah. as this whole subject of nephrology is concerned, what do you feel are your like interest areas and what were the core areas for the exam? Like as far as all the units are concerned, what did you feel had maximum importance for the exam? And what are your interest areas in nephrology? During my MD period, I was not exposed to that many glomerular diseases, most likely I think, okay. because that's the delta usually by the nephrologist itself. Oh, okay. So I'm kind of interested in that. Fine, good. Uh, like uh, when you set out to prepare for nephrology, like did you have any seniors or uh, what guidance did they give you? How important was like asking our seniors and taking their help? Like did your own unit seniors uh, pursue nephrology? Anyone, or you were like this kind of. taking it that way or you used to discuss a lot with your seniors uh, actually i discussed with my seniors like they were the guidance in, during the initial periods uh, one of okay. my unit senior is doing nephrology in mmc itself and okay. one of my close senior is also doing nephrology in the same unit so okay. they provided the guidance the initial guidance that's needed like what i have to read they were the one who suggested that i have to read fairly mm. so okay, that's sort of from there actually the guidance is important i think yes 
did you read any special books for transplant dialysis or you were like sticking with pihali only have you read donovich or have you read uh, dogirdas for dialysis or any books like that no sir i couldn't try that no, i couldn't try pihali okay what did you think was the difficulty level of the paper because if you look at nephrology that you have studied did you feel that the exam was on an easier side or exam was actually on a harder side difficulty level actually, of the exam i think this is on the easier side like this paper it's on the easier side okay and uh, there are only con- there are only concepts or they ask you like mugup style questions also fact number based questions it's most of the time it's conceptual questions maybe around 60 questions around 60 questions they are conceptual questions only even from medicine it's conceptual like if you know the concept you can actually yes uh so, dialysis and transplant are two areas which we have very limited exposure during post graduation so yeah. uh, how did you approach that and how important it is for the original exam many people find rest of nephrology learning very easy but they find dialysis very hard to understand they find transplant very hard to study so what do you feel is the way to go about with that those are two topics which we have only very very minimal exposure during post graduation so how do we tackle that with respect to the exam uh, i had because of my previous experience with any inases i could yeah. know like this is the thing that going they are going to ask in the transplant okay. basically they are stressing upon the immunosuppressive drugs mm-hmm. they are not going to ask us about the transplant and what i'm going to do after that yes exactly so i have to focus on that like last time i missed the question that so i have to i have to concentrate more on the immunosuppressive agents okay so i think that's important in transplant yes. per se and dialysis initial by during my first reading i couldn't understand it like most of the things i couldn't understand but after that i had to actually use your video transplant and dialysis i had to use your video i had to read it again so that was actually helpful i because i had to understand the concept that's the thing there yeah because dialysis is one area wherein how much ever you try and teach unless and until you have seen the machine yourself and seen how huh. the machine works nobody can actually explain beyond a point because the machine is yes, something that you have to yourself go and see so many students uh, they find dialysis difficult but actually if they go to a dialysis center and talk to the technician and then start studying i think half the job will be done then and there itself yeah uh, that's the ex- experience that matters there yeah. the experience that matters now as far as like uh, choosing this as a career is concerned have you ever had any doubts on that because many people now if you look at the vast number of students majority of the people are nowadays inclined towards uh, rheumatology as well as uh, endocrine if you look at competition wise why because many people feel that uh, rheumatology and endocrine give much better life balance work life balance etc nephrology is deemed to be a very tough specialty to pursue and a specialty wherein you are having to work 24 hours 24 into 7 has it ever cut across your mind or when did you you have have you ever thought that way or you are just like i mean is it like it doesn't matter whatever it is what is your attitude on that no actually during my initial period i have thought like that like i mm-hmm. have to have a work life balance and everything but the thing is even more important than that is what i'm interested in yes, that's the exactly. thing that's more important yes so maybe endocrine and immunology can be easier like the like work like balance will be better but i'm actually in, interested in nephrology so i have to kind of perceive that that's it very good i okay, didn't give nice. much thought about it after that yes, very good what about procedures in nephrology have you have you ever actually tried out few procedures during your pg times uh, what is your take on it because nephrology is becoming very much like a semi surgical kind of speciality people are into lot of procedures in nephrology so have you mean thought of yourself as a procedure person or you are a more learning kind of person what do you feel right now i didn't have any experience with the procedures sir. other okay. than central line insertion i didn't have any experience okay fine so what so i can have to learn that the, okay once you go to the department you can so Maybe. i mean uh, again many of the students have this doubt no like if you look at the vast majority people are appearing for the entrance only very few people like you have actually studied from standard colleges there are so many students who are doing pg from very average colleges etc etc for them without any nephrology exposure if you start preparing how do you think is it practical what would be your advice to people who have not seen number of patients in big numbers especially during pg but want to pursue nephrology or willing to study with study for that and willing to work hard for that what would be your advice to those those kind of students uh then this most of the nephrology it's conceptual based only like the questions okay. everything is conceptual based either we have to see the patients or we have to see the questions like the clinical scenarios and everything other than that there is nothing much that can be helpful i think oh yes very true very true and while reading pihali like uh, do you like follow the school type pattern like reading cover to cover word to word trying to memorize that bit, or get an overall idea of that chapter uh first time I, when i read it i tried to read it cover to cover but okay. after that exam i was like okay i should know this topics 
I should know what it is. Yeah. If I choose a topic, I have to know what it is. That's it. I don't have to remember everything. I have to know what the important points are. That's it. Like if I see a patient, I have to be able to manage that patient. If I read exactly. this. Yes. I so that is doing that. Again, something which we find is lacking in many of the students. People who plan to read PRE, what they do is they try to read PRE like our ninth standard history book. That is what I have seen many of the times. That means you start reading PRE from word to word. Eight percent of people with this will have that. Three percent of people with that this will have this. That kind of learning is what many people pursue. So I think your message is very cut and clear. No, we need to have an overall grounding or a conceptual understanding of the topic in total. Rather than knowing, did you feel that for the exam they are asking you such kind of details, like small, small, minor details? Is anybody asking for the exam? Is it necessary to know those things? I don't think so, sir. Even in doing last analysis, there was a question on anti-GBM disease. I think, like I know what anti-GBM disease is, but the thing is, I'm not, I was not conscious, conceptually good in that. So oh, I missed yeah. that question. The thing is, it's common in young males, but I missed that. Yes, correct. That's the thing. So, I, th then only got to know that yeah, this is wrong. Thing. Like rather than knowing exact numbers, percentages, etc., that overall grounding is most important. Because if you read Pihali, you will definitely be able to get to it. That young male, a smoker who is getting a second year yeah. at some kind of a hydrocarbon exposure or fluid overload or something, etc., he is the person who is very likely to land up with the anti-GBM disease. That is just a basic understanding. But if yeah. you want to actually read and more and more and more and more, but that will not be of use. So that is why, as you said, smart learning is very important. And the smart learning is obviously, that is the key. Now, you were working also for a long time. Many of the people now stop working and fully prepare for the entrance exam. How much easy or difficult it is to work and learn at the same time? Actually, it was kind of better that I, I'm, I was working here. Otherwise, I couldn't read for more than for three or four hours a day. Anyway, I won't be able to concentrate right now. Okay. So it's better that I have a distraction. I have my time with my friends. So it was actually okay. better. That helped a lot. Okay, fine. You were also like, if you had not got this time, would you have continued with your preparation? What was your plan? If you had not got this particular entrance exam, means what would you have done? Uh, the truth be told, I didn't want to pursue it after this. Like, if I don't understand nephrology twice, mm -hmm. so it's better that I leave that. I was oh. like that at this, this time, during this time. Wait, okay. Like if I didn't, I had read freehally twice. If I didn't get this time, then I'm not good enough to be in nephrology. Wow, that's great, man. That's a super thought. I mean, again, that's something which I want to share with everyone. Many people, what they do is they would have told me an answer like I would have again prepared, I would have prepared till the end of my life to get nephrology. You know, that is not the answer we want. We want an answer like this. That means once you identify that you are good at something, you try for it. If you get results, then you proceed with it. If you find that you are not getting the results, understand that you are not good enough and go for the next plan. I think that is what is called smart learning. And that is that will obviously hold you in good stead. I'm 100% <laughs> sure with that. So as far as uh, working in medicine is concerned, you, know, you, you are like, there are so many people who ask this doubt. Uh, if you want to pursue your career in medicine itself, okay, or actually take a speciality, because after MBBS, taking PG is basically a necessity. It is not that no, it uh, you can't do without it, okay. But after MD, taking DM is a choice. You can do without it also. What is yes, your sir. opinion on that? What about somebody sticking to medicine? Or is it in reality, is it actually a must that you have to do a speciality? What are your thoughts on that? Right now, like we choose super specialty maybe because we lack confidence in doing medicine. Like medicine needs more confidence than doing the super specialty. Exactly, exactly, yes. Like we so have to know, know so many things in there. Yes. What if we don't have that knowledge, then we are choosing super specialty. That's my idea, I think. Yes, I also feel the same thing. That means you get an opportunity to study in a good college for three more years. And once you study in a good college for three more years, in that much better you become a physician. And that yeah. will reflect in your physician practice. That is the only way to think. Because if you stop with MD and start working once again in the private sector, within a period of two or three years, you will lose all that sharpness that you gained as an MD person. So what will happen is you will again come back to square one. But if you continue studying, the next three years also, I think you will be in property. What about the interview? So so many people ask us about the interview. You know? so post your theory for INI. What was the interview like this? Tell us about the interview. Mm. Interview, like questions. Yeah, yeah so what did you focus on what kind of person they asked exactly? Like, uh, that was one clinical scenario that uh, okay. they were just checking whether we are good with the clinical things. Okay, uh, that was one question regarding that. And second thing is image best question. Okay. Uh, and other things, they were just discussing. Like, we were just discussing. It's not like question and answer type. Like, they are asking a question, we have to answer like that. It's not like that. 
just just like, give us a clinical scenario we had to discuss that it was kind of we were kind of we were discuss a case yeah how we discuss yeah. a case how we give our differentials okay have you been part of the msp gold medal exam nephrology exam during your pg times uh, no sir the thing is we didn't have that opportunity to do that because of covid i think we didn't get oh, an opportunity oh. to write okay It that is happen. my first professor with nephrology okay in fact first time i came across the department of nephrology i think hospital college and entered there and attended the exam so that was actually a what is a big turn around in my whole life because i started looking at the subject in a whole new different way so as far as medicine training is concerned you are having a training program going on at mmc what what is your personal take on that like are we being trained good enough to actually decide on what to pursue or do you feel this much training is enough it is an individual's uh, opinion on these things or as a pg how important you feel is to be taught by someone because so many people feel that as a pg olden times nobody needs to teach you you have to learn by yourself the new bunch of students who come in always feel that nobody teaches them anything so they don't know anything do we do someone has to really come and teach us or we have to be learning by ourselves so the thing is it's not like they have to come and teach they can't hold our hands and teach the thing yes. is they have to rectify our mistakes like if some, we have someone that point out that this is a mistake that you are doing that's more than enough in md period i think yes so you are not like in sing with the conventional kind of class like have as an md person so many people coming and sitting at a place and one person coming and teaching you have you have you felt like is it of any value or like we can ourselves use up that time you don't have to listen to anybody for the class uh the most important learning thing that's happening during md period is we are actually seeing the patients we are actually treating the patients i think that's more than enough for us to learn yes. you are basically the typical madras medical college postgraduate student no i mean i have been doing a lot of interviews i think most of the time we are seeing people who's onus is on working hard i was actually waiting to see a person who is talking about onus is on seeing patients i think more than working hard more seeing more number of patients discussing more number of cases is what that matters i think that's exactly what you also have said more than just thinking about like we, there are so many people who complain you know like i am working i don't get time to read i don't get time to read in this college we don't get any time to read nobody teaches us anything but ultimately all that is of no importance even if you don't read also nothing will happen if you don't see yeah. cases you sit and read then you will become the biggest idiot in this world so there is no point that so what about yeah. like have you thought of how you want to pursue this career where are you planning to take and what is your thoughts on pursuing nephrology now where are you planning to take the seat and what about your future plans uh, right now i'm planning to take a uh, day nephrology in pj is chandigarh okay. okay chandigarh okay that's going to be really tough for okay. a tough place tough working conditions and uh, you're going to be tested that's once again but i think I you like it. It. i think you're you like being tested i think yes yeah, so this is i have to go out of my comfort zone like i was exactly. in mmc for the past 10 years i was comfortable yeah. there so i had okay. to move Oh, that's great! <laughs> Because somebody who studied MBBS and MD, I think this doing nephrology in MMC would have been very easy for you. Because you know the place, yes. you know the college, you know the department. It would have been a cakewalk, I guess. But then you were planning to get out of your comfort zone and go to a place where you don't know the place, you don't know the language, you don't know the people, you don't know anything. And it is a very, very what is it? A kind of a place where you have to work out of your skin. So I think that also, I think you are very positively seeing that. I mean, that's that's again great. because the level of exposure that you get in pgi is going to be anyway one step ahead of all the routine colleges if you think of medical colleges and nephrology course mmc would definitely be the top in the country so if you want to take a college that is up and above mmc means there is no college like that there are only institutes so as far as institutes are concerned obviously pgi is one among the one among the top 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 institutes so that is again great so finally uh, what advice for people preparing it's a cliche question but still what is your advice for people who are actually preparing I don't know if I'm good enough to give advice, but the thing is, kindly pursue what you are interested in. That's it. It's not That's like true. scope or anything. Yeah, yeah. I too actually perfectly agree with you. This interview, I think that is a message. Nobody should look at Vignesh and learn anything because Vignesh is a special person. When we do interviews, there are two kind of people. One kind of people are people who have a very systematic, structured plan, sit and work hard and work hard and learn and again work hard and again actually get the seat. They are the people whom we can emulate. i was seeing so many number of people like that you are a person who you are going with your gut instincts and you are very brainy i feel so because of that if you try to emulate what you are doing mostly you will not get a seat <laughs> not making any notes <laughs> reading really means fair out work out for the vast majority of the students so i think as you said following your interest is most important because finally we cannot do something which we are not interested in that is a simple simple point okay so once again thanks a lot man thanks a lot Uh, once again remembering uh, gopalakshan sir and uh, his contributions to nephrology and how he has inspired thousands of students like you so that's again awesome 
and uh, big big hearty congrats from the entire team sure thank you thank you very much for having me sir thank you thank you thank you vignesh